So let's then go to, uh, to some of the applications um, of this of this model. So what I'll look at uh, here is first at the choice of product positioning. So are you going to choose to position your product as a direct competitor, as, as a substitute for those of your rivals? Or would you rather produce a good or a service which is rather independent in terms of demand? from those of your rival. Uh, then I'll have a look at mergers and finally we'll have a look at tying. So substitutes or independent goods. So what's the model going to look like? Well, the first stage, so we have two plat platforms here, A and B. So in the first stage, we're going to look at the at strategy, all right? So the first st stages will be the strategy stages and the strategy here, consists of your choice of product, of your product design, if you wish. So the, the first stage is pl platform A, the first player, is going to choose any design, so some some type of products. And uh, of course, this is uh, going to be a no-cost, uh, this no-cost uh, benchmark here. And doesn't really matter which, which good uh, A is going to choose, and product B is going to choose some other good, which might either be a complete substitute, uh, as in, uh, you, as a consumer, you would only want one of those two, or could, could be a completely in, independent good. But we're going to assume that aside from this substitution or independence, these two goods will be symmetric, so ter both in terms of demand and in terms of costs. So there is no, not essentially, there is no benefit to being the first to, to choose here. And then, in, uh, you know, once those this products, the product characteristics have been chosen in the first two stages, there's going to be competition for consumers. So this is going to be modeled as our price competition the way that I just uh, discussed in the setting up of this model. So both A and B are going to set a price, P A and P B, and consumers are going to buy either one, zero, or two of these products. And the major question here, of course, is how is the equilibrium in this game, so particularly how are these choices in stage one and stage two, how are they going to depend on the size of the single homing rents R, so the size of rents that platforms can get from the advertisers that they give access uh, to, their, uh, to their consumers. What you'll find here is uh, the result of this of this analysis is that when R is small, um, it's going to pay to to choose these two goods to be independent. So what happens if these two goods are independent? That's a left hand side diagram here. Um, is um, there's going to be uh, uh, some consumers that buy only A, some consumers that buy only B, but since these two goods are independent, there's also this, this square here of goods that uh, are labeled A, B, where consumers are going to buy both A and B because they have high um, utilities V for both A and for B, and these goods are independent. So you can get, um, essentially you can behave as a monopolist on the market for goods. You can raise your price B, A, and, and Platform B can raise its price PB to their monopoly levels. And R is small. So for what consumers would you get this R? Well, in this case, only for this uh, rectangle here, which is not, well, not very big. But when R is small, that does not really matter. When R is large, there's going to be a choice of substitutes. So substitutes means no consumer is going to buy both A and B. Uh, so those with high VA are going to buy uh, uh, good A, those with higher VB are going to buy, buy uh, product B, and those with low utilities for either product are, are going to buy uh, anything at all here. So th this is going to mean there's a very, going to be very severe, com severe competition here. So this is you know, essentially like hoteling competition if you want, want or uh, yeah, essentially but uh, kind of virtual competition in uh, in these goods. Um, but you know, the important point here is that this area A, this green area here, so the, the people who only buy A is fairly large. So well, what's the benefit of that? Well, if R is large, those are the people are the ones only buying A, so single homing on product A, and actually you can get the 
large single home rents. So R is large, single home rents here are large. So you can actually gain these larger benefits. So if you have to choose between either of these, so fierce competition here with large group of consumers who are single homing versus uh, monopoly rents from the consumer side over here, but only a fairly small uh, group of people who are actually uh, going to single home on your on your side. You know, obviously, what's going to happen here, if the R is really large and it's going to dominate basically the profits from consumers, so you would prefer to be basically on this side of the right hand side of this slide. Whereas if um, if R is really small, this this final part here, so the profits that you get from those who single home is going to be uh, fairly small compared to the monopoly profits that you can gain uh, in case of independent goods from both the people who buy A and the people who buy A B on the uh, on the left hand side in the independent goods goods market. So you can actually you know I also made. Uh, a plot here of those profits uh, and this for particular choice so you remember we had this this probability distribution f uh, for these uh, for these uh, utilities v va or vb it was the same for both um and this particular plot goes for the uh, for the case where these these utility these uh, probability distributions are in the uniform so essentially that um corresponds to to linear demand for these goods so what do we see when R is fairly small and the, the orange line here is it's labeled as gamma S1. So gamma S1 actually coincides with the, with, uh, with choosing complete substitutes, where the, whereas the, the blue line, the gamma equals zero line, is actually the one in which these two products are actually completely independent. So what you see here is when R, which is on the horizontal axis, is small, is going to be much more attractive for both firms to be producing independent goods so much larger profits here but when R is R is fairly large and it goes above one essentially or above 0.8 um, they're actually the choice for both firms of being substitutes or being in fierce competition with each other competing head-on competing head-to-head -head in, in a fierce way on the consumer side but creating those large groups of single homing producers and here actually this this um, straight part of this curve actually corresponds to the, uh, the situation in which prices are driven down all the way down to marginal costs, which are zero in our case. Um, those rents here, or those profits here are only essentially the profits that we get from the single homes. And the SR gets very large, those single home profits from advertise that we can get from advertisers those are going to outweigh all those monopoly profits that we can get here in case of the uh, of the multi home situation in which uh, the uh, the independent goods situation i should say where the multi homers dominate and not so many consumers are actually single homing um, uh, so in the paper, actually, we'll also look at gammas, which are in between. So those would correspond to choices, which are actually in between, completely independent, com completely substitute. So we can actually also expand to that analysis, but the same general conclusion holds. The interpretation here is when, again, when the single home rents are small, so you don't get very many access monopoly rents from those, from selling advertising slots, essentially. To those advertisers uh, that want to advertise to your single home consumers, if, if the, the benefits from those are small, then you care mostly about rents that you can get on the consumer side. So you would like to be a monopolist essentially on the consumer side. Oh, well, that's going to happen if you, monop you can monopolize those people if, if those two goods are independent. You don't have to care basically about your rivals. Yeah. For all you care is it non-existent you only care about the demand that that consumers have for your go your goods and that's completely independent from the cons consumer demand uh, for your rifles goods for advertisers that means that since both these platforms will be serving most consumers so the a b goods uh, a b uh, square if you wish in this in this diagram is fairly large for those consumers 
as an advertiser, you have the luxury of being able to 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 uh, to contract with either pro platform A or platform B. So there's going to be competition in providing these advertisements. So you are actually going to leave little rent, if any at all, to these uh, to these platforms. So these platforms have a strong substitutes on the advertising side because they can both reach the same consumers, but they are independent by choice in turn on the consumer side. Vice versa, so if these monopoly rents on the advertising side are, if they're really large, then as a platform of both platforms essentially would like to be large on the, large on the single homing dimension, uh, so how can you make sure that those consumers who are on your platform are not also going to shop at your rival's platform so that they will be indeed single homers? Well, you can achieve that if you make your good, your own good, in a strong substitute to your rival's platform's goods. So that means consumers, if they buy at your place, they will not also visit your rival's place because that's going to be very useless to them. That means in turn these uh, these uh, consumers will be single homing. So if an advertiser would like to reach this particular consumer, they will have to deal with you and you can actually extract these large R monopoly profits from each of these advertisers. So that's um, a general um, feature here. So what we see here is that either you relax competition in the product market, which uh, you know, uh, you know, which happens if you if you choose independent goods, uh, but in which case you lose these monopoly profits in the advertising. So on the advertising side, you will be strong substitutes, or on the other hand, you choose to be very strong substitutes on the consumer markets, but which in turn because all consumers will now, or most consumers will now just visit one of these two firms. There's going to be large monopoly profits because goods platforms are, are completely independent now for advertisers. Because, uh, you know, each platform is now serving a different set of consumers. So if you, as an advertiser, you want to reach a particular consumer, you will have to pay this platform. Um, so the, essentially, essentially what you might call this is a seesaw effect. So the seesaw effect is here not in terms of prices, as is sort of something which is commonly known actually in, uh, in the platforms market, but in terms of strategy. So you choose your strategy here in terms of being a strategic substitute or an in, independent, uh, a substitute good or an independent good, both on the advertising side and on the consumer side, but you can only be you know, if you are a substitute on one side, then you will be independent good on the other side. And you will do so where this is, uh, you want to be independent on that side where profits are going to be largest. So in the second application, we see sort of generalization or a, 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 a different, at least a different uh, version of that. So let's assume here that we are so I'm going to look at mergers. So let's assume we have here four firms, so four products. And I'm going to label these uh, products A, A prime, B, and B prime. And these uh, A and A prime goods will be closed substitute goods, exempt already, so they are already in the market. So that might be uh, two different search firms, for instance, and B and B prime might be two different social networks, if you wish. So B and B prime are, are close competitors and A and A prime are close competitors. Now suppose you're firm A, so you're producing good A, you're allowed to choose to merge with one of these firms. So which one would you like to merge with? Would you rather merge with your close competitor? So if you're a search firm A, would you like to, to uh, merge with search firm A prime, becoming a monopolist on the search market? Or would you rather merge with one of these platform firms so for instance with, with b or with b prime becoming a conglomerate uh, active both in search and in social network if you wish that's one uh, those, those are your two, two choices well that's your ace choices essentially um and what b is then going to do is to merge with the or you know the, the one who has not been chosen yet the other firm is going to merge with the remaining firm so your remaining the 
the outcome of the remainder of the, the outcome of this of this merger wave is that there will be two larger firms. So either there's an A A prime firm where the, the two firms which are both doing search are merged, and a B B prime firm where the two social networks have merged, or the the outcome will be one A B firm so having both search and a social network competing with an A prime B prime merged entity, which produces both this rival search engine, but also the rival network. Of course, in the first uh, situation, so when we have uh, the two search firms going together, A and A prime, and the two uh, networks going together, B and B prime, then either firm will be a monopolist on the consumer side for each category. And in the second case, both firms will be conglomerates, both will be producing substitutes of both the network and of the, uh, of the search uh, engine, and the firms will be head-on competing for consumers. So again, the question is, when you're which strategy, which merger strategy would these firms choose? In particular, how are these strategies going to depend on the single home rents or that, are, that are available from the advertising? side. So what happens if we have uh, the two search firms uh, merging and on the other side the two uh, platform the, 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 the two social network firms uh, BNB prime merging as well? Well on this on the A market so the search market, this merger of uh, the one search engine with its close competitor search engine is going to switch off consumer competition for consumers on this search market. So, and you know, in particular, this would mean they would be able to, since they are the monopolist now on search, they would be able to ask high prices for search in this market. Uh, so we see that here. So A and A prime, they are of course close substitutes and there were no substitutes, but they are now in the hands. These two substitutes are owned essentially by the same firms. So the, these two prices, P, PA and PA prime, if you wish, they are coordinated or they are set by a single firm who owns both search engines. And of course, uh, this single firm being a monopolist here can choose these prices to be at a monopolist level for these firms. Same thing won't happen on the other side, on for the other firm, the BB prime firm, so which provides both the social networks. Um, so it will actually ask a price, a positive price, a monopoly price for, for being the single social network provider to, to consumers. So it can extract the rents from consumers from being, uh, being the sole the dominant uh, network. So what are profits? So it provides pi for, for firm A, uh, the AA prime, for, prime firm, I should say, which provides both, both uh, search engines is well first of all p times well all the blue the, the blue area of consumers who are consuming your search goods and they're all charge a price p so p times this volume or this area essentially a plus a prime of uh, all consumers doing some search plus you would also get the uh, the monopoly rents on all those consumers who are doing the search through your place but who are not connected are not connected to any social network, so they would be in the zero category basically on the on the BB B, B prime platform. So it would be you know, what's the size of that is a one minus or 100% minus all those consumers who do link up to a social network. So those would be the only consumers, so those consumers who do search but who do not link up to a social network. On those, uh, those people would be single homes, and you can actually add those. Uh, monopoly rents on the advertising side to your total profits. So that happens with the AA prime merger. So that's uh, case one. The other case would be the AB merger. So in this case, on either market, both the search market and on the social network markets, you will be sort of in close competition, intense consumer competition uh, for with your rival because the A prime, B prime, market uh, firm is actually competing with you on both dimensions, both on the search and for for the social network services. So actually we end up uh, on the AA prime market, we end up with, with serious competition here 
between these two firms and we have this Bertrand like picture where this uh, this market is split up essentially between these two uh, firms so either either consumers only uh, take this a market or they uh, uh, consume this a, a search product or they consume this a prime product but never both and similarly on the uh, b b prime social network markets so either link up to network b or they link up to net, network b prime so if you're the blue firm so the ab firm which uh, what are your profits well of course you will, again you in general you will um, you will be able to make profits on the consumer side if you charge prof positive prices so how large would those be well the price that you can charge well, this being a symmetric uh, market these prices will be the same for these two uh, two which times the blue area so the blue area on the on the search side and the blue area on the network side a plus b and you will also be able to make uh, profits r on those consumers who in the end will be single homes so we'll be buying either a or b or both on your market so that you can actually reach them be it through search or through the social network or one of these two whichever you choose but two channels that you control but you can only charge as r as long as these consumers do not also um buy at either a prime or b prime so it's one minus the total colored area for the uh, for the a prime and b prime marks the green colored area so again we can analyze you know which of these uh, so what will be the optimal uh, strategy so in equilibrium we're going to set our price p uh, in the optimal way both in the uh, with the AA prime merger and well, presumably a lower pr price because of competition in the AB merger case, but also these uh, these contributions from single home are going to be quite different. And what we find again, the result here is if this single home rent is fairly small, then you would choose for monopolization. So if you can choose, do you want to merge you know, uh, without advertising rents being important essentially? Would you like to merge with a close competitor or with a uh, uh, something completely uh, different from your from your market? Well, in the sort of traditional way, um, manner, you would say, well, I'd, I'd like to to monopolize one single market because it's going to be be uh, raising my my profits uh, the most. So that's also what we worry about in traditional merger analysis. You remember, if these two goods are in the same relevant market. For consumers well, then you have to worry for monopoly rents and that's exactly what happens here on the other hand if r is large prices might go to zero because of uh, fierce competition or they will at least be very low but you know if, if prices are are very small in this case then in this a b versus a prime b prime firm mergers ultimately for each of these services half of the consumers Two independent halves actually are going to consume your search product or your social networking product. So actually, a quarter of those consumers, because these two things, these these two decisions are going to be independent, a quarter of those consumers is going to buy exclusively at your firm, at firm A. So the rents that you get, that you can, that you are able to get from these uh, advertising site. Uh, is going to be proportioned to r over four a quarter r under a a prime almost everybody is actually going to multi-home because they're going to buy your search product and they are also most of them are also going to buy your rival's social network part so actually the number of people who buy uh, as long as as prices are fairly small which happens as r is large um, everybody will actually be linked up to you and to your rival in some way either to the primed or the non-primed product so there will be actually no r income so conclusion here again is r is if r is small you're heading for monopoly basically so the traditional analysis if you wish you can ignore this r factor traditional analysis firms move to merge if they want to maximize their market power they will merge with goods which are close substitutes for their own goods if R is large, on the other hand, 
it's going to pay to diversify because that gives you the largest share of consumers who are going to actually uh, single home on your firm and for those firm for those consumers you can actually sell those uh, those advertising slots at uh, monopoly prices to advertisers so again we see here this uh, this seesaw uh, behavior essentially do we want to monopolize the, the goods market which happens if r is small and then we have the, these mergers uh, of like firms or do we rather want to monopolize the advertising market when, which, happen, which is going to be profitable when r is large and then it's actually going to pay to diversify. As a final application, let's look at complements and particular tying. So here, the example we might have in mind is this recent example that uh, that you have discussed actually in your uh, in your case presentations on the Android uh, case, and uh, that you also know actually from the from the Microsoft um, Internet Explorer this browser war example. The tying of two goods, so yes. For instance, the tying of Google Search and Google Play Store would be one example of this. So you have looked, or will look, actually, at uh, depending on whether you're, when you are actually looking at this uh, at this video, uh, in in one of the exercises in the tutorial, you will have been looking at essentially the mechanism proposed by Choi and John, a uh, paper by Choi and John, which looks actually at uh, at one version of a rationale for this. Uh, for this tying behavior in such a two-sided market. So here we're looking at a slightly different version of that, uh, but which is related to it and also being in the in the um, in the context of these uh, these two-sided uh, markets. So the idea is what we would like to do if we are one of these platform firms, we would like to actually tie two different products which are complements A and B. So and let's call, let's take them to be indeed E. Play Store or a different app, perhaps, um, and the search app B. And why would we like to tie these products? Well, we would like to avoid having some consumers buy your Play Store and, and other apps and buy uh, your rivals search B Prime because those consumers will again not be single homing on you, they will be reachable by advertisers uh, providing data. To different kinds of firms, so both to yourself through your Play Store apps and uh, to your rival through the search behavior, and that will sort of uh, eat into your monopoly profits on the advertising side. So that's the, the intuition here. So I, I, I'm trying to actually make this intuition uh, try to make that once again, point it out once again in actually in a graph here rather than do the complete analysis. So what we see here is um, in the middle row here, we would have a Play Store, which is essentially, you know, you might call this a system here. Uh, so that's the, the dominant uh, the dominant player. So everybody uh, who is on Android will have, well, almost everybody will have to actually uh, access Play Store. That's the, the, the assumption here in this, in this particular case. But they might uh, go with uh, Google search if they want to do a search on their phones, or they might go to some other search engine uh, if they want to do uh, their search uh, on the on the mobile phones. But now this dash line here says, well, these suppose now the, these two firm, these two products, which are complements, but which are owned by the same producer, the same firm, they are actually tied together. So if then. Uh, not tied, so you might actually say, well, some consumers might do search with one firm by Play Store from Google, from the other firm, and indeed advertisers could reach these consumers, show their advertisements to these consumers either through one of the other apps sold through Play Store and the search app from this rival player. Uh, so here, actually, uh, Android Play Store. Um, loses its uh, its single homing power, its, its gatekeeper power over those consumers. These green consumers, on the other hand, who use both Google Search and Play Store, those are single homing on a single firm, on the Google firm. So what tying does basically is make it less likely that these red consumers exist. Actually, that uh, you know, if it's full tying, basically, then if Google Search is the would would be the only accessible app here we would rule out any of these red consumers, essentially. So when is this going to be important? Well, again, if this firm derives most of its benefit 
from the advertising side and particularly from this monopolizing of the access rights to consumers so tying here rather than being this uh, being explained through these well, it's sort of predation kind of stories that we have seen in the Winston story but also in the uh, in the Choi and John uh, model here actually tying is related to the monopolization of the advertising side so tie here happens because it allows the linked firms here the linked firm the single firm which produces these two linked goods these complement goods to behave as a monopolist towards advertisers it, so it ties products aimed at consumers result being it's can behave as a monopolist for access to these green consumers to the advertisers whereas without the tie there would also be some of these red consumers over whom um, this firm is going to lose these single home rents so there's a slightly different version basically of a story that might sort of rationalize tying in these uh, in these platform kind of markets so that's uh, the three applications that we uh, that I, I promised you. Uh, so the next bit will be a conclusion of this model, and then I'll end actually with a wrap up for you know, what did we do actually in this in this course.